and we were kind of competitive, you know, here, uh, you know, like many fathers and sons. And, you know, I always kind of wanted to outdo him and, <clears throat> and win prizes and awards that he never won, you know, like you might do with your kids playing football or, or, you know, whatever uh, you guys call it football, we call it soccer, but mm. uh, playing football here, American football, uh, it's often, you know, the father was, you know, captain of the football team in high school mm. and he's, you know, trying to relive his glory. Now here's his son and, mm. and they're trying to compete with each other. So we had that rivalry. Mm. Um, it wasn't the most healthy, but, but I knew for a fact he never won a Nobel prize. So I knew mm. <laughs> case closed. If I could win if a Nobel do prize, that, yeah. <laughs> permanent bragging rights. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> and so that kind of led, Led me down a dark path because it became, you know, in in uh, in Judaism, there's you know grave sin, which I'm Jewish, and and the and the practice of idol worship is very common, and, and there are mm. many different types of idols. I mean, I've already mentioned a couple of them, you know, from YouTube subscribers to mm. university professors to, you know, what college your kids go to, what um, you know, how many subscribers you have on Instagram mm. or followers. Uh, these are all idols, right? Money, mm. obviously famous, but in, in academia, it's you know. If 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 you get ten citations to a paper, as you know, it's it's like considered a, a decent paper and mm -hmm. a pretty pretty well regarded one. And um, but you know the stakes are are so you know small compared to all these other metrics that I think mm -hmm. a lot of academics, such as myself, look to other ways of validation. And, and mm -hmm. part of that validation was you know winning awards and prizes. And the biggest one of all, I mean, we're talking early you know mid December, uh, and every year on. December 10th, which is Alfred Nobel's death day, uh, you know, these worshipers go to Sweden and bow down and accept mm. the gilded graven image with the visage <laughs> of Alfred Nobel. And I mean, it couldn't, and it couldn't be more eschatological. It couldn't be more, you know, kind of cultish and, yeah. um, but it's all in good fun. Right. I mean, it, mm. it doesn't really harm anyone except what it does. Right. If you, if you, if you look at it from the perspective of it determines funding decisions, it mm. determines who gets hired at universities. I was told by my department chair at the time when I was hired that whose father, his father had actually mm. won the Nobel prize for inventing a laser in Russia. Mm. He told me, well, we kind of hired you because we, we think you're going to win a Nobel prize. And if you don't, you know, it'll disappoint a lot of us. Mm. So I was told that in no uncertain terms, that was kind of the path that I was on because of the experiment that I co-invented mm. <clears throat> when I was in this purgatory of being a postdoc at, at Caltech in uh, Pasadena, where I spent three three years. So that that experiment was, you know, kind of designed by me and and my colleagues to take the earliest baby picture of the universe the, using the it's called the cosmic microwave background radiation, which is the oldest light in the universe, but it's not the oldest radiation. Mm. 